Hello, Serious Survivor here, and today we're going to look at a nuclear survival kit or gear set. These days we're much closer than ever to a nuclear strike with all the tensions growing in the world between the countries that are already capable of nuclear and chemical attacks and the countries that are currently developing the technology. This doesn't even include terrorist attacks, nuclear accidents, dirty bombs, things such as that. So having a kit that can keep you safe and keep your loved ones alive till you get to your primary location or while you're out scavenging for supplies is of essential importance. In the case of a nuclear attack, the safest place to be is somewhere that's underground. In an urban area, one of the best places to hide after a nuclear attack is in the basement of a building that's constructed of thick brick, steel, or concrete. If you're someone who already has a commercial bunker or you've built or purchased a home fallout shelter, you're already prepared better than most. But for those who do not have these locations, we still have the need to prepare ourselves, our family, our groups. Spending tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars on a bunker is always the best choice if possible. But bunker or no bunker, there will come a need to leave the shelter for some reason or another at some time. Or maybe the need will arise that a survivor is not at his primary shelter and has to make his way to that location. This is where being prepared comes in. No matter the need, having a nuclear survival kit or gear is of extreme importance. Here we're going to look at some items that are absolutely necessary to make a kit such as this. And we're also going to look at some additional items that could be added in. And I will leave some links in the description to some of the better priced items that I talk about. And one of these kits could be put together for around a couple hundred bucks or less. Number one, a gas mask and filters. To tell if a gas mask is designated or designed for a nuclear fallout event or similar, we have to validate that it has an MBC or CBRN rating. The ideal mask for an event that involves radiation, chemical, or biological hazards is going to be rated CBRN. This ensures that the mask is able to provide not only safe and clean air, but it also decontaminates the air in the event of a nuclear detonation, a dirty bomb, or RDD, and for chemical and biological weapons or attacks. CBRN stands for C, chemical. And this ranges from mustard gas to sarin gas, riot control gases, and basically any type of nerve agent currently in the inventory or use by the world's governments. Biological. This protects against diseases and similar, such as virus outbreak, anthrax, Ebola, flu, and more. Radiation. This is radioactive materials dispersed by a dirty bomb using conventional explosives, an RDD. Nuclear. This is protection against the radiation emanating from a leak or a nuclear attack. CBRE and gas masks have the highest level of protection and are a necessity in the case of a nuclear fallout. These are originally tested by regulatory bodies and they verify to meet those criteria. There are a lot of these on the market and they can range in price from 50 bucks and up as much as you want to spend. Now some important points to take into consideration is first we want to make sure the gas mask is CBRN approved. You want to make sure that you're also using CBRN filters. Now you'll see NBC a lot of times in place of CBRN and that's the older designation although it is still used but if it's NBC that's nuclear, biological, and chemical so those work really well too. Next an NBC suit. Now a gas mask alone will not keep you safe. A survivor also needs to shield their body from radioactive particles and debris, and a specialized chemical or NBC suit will do this. Suit and peripheral equipment here would include your hood, gloves, underlayer gloves, boots, and boot coverings. This will maintain a level of protection to avoid contamination with your clothing and other garments. Not only will these protect you as you wear them, they will prevent one from returning to their shelter or bunker with contaminated clothing on. So before you enter your bunker or protected shelter with these, you're going to want to make sure to clean yourself and to wash them. Now any suit that's made of Tyvek or a heavy PVC substance, and as long as it's completely shielded, will be what somebody needs. This will definitely allow a survivor to experience an exponentially less amount of exposure to radiation or anything else from a chemically designed or biological weapon.
Full body protection can be achieved when in contaminated areas by using these high density suits, chemical and puncture resistant boots, chemical and radiation resistant gloves, and also to use duct tape or a very strong adhesive or sealing type of tape to seal any gaps between the boots and gloves and the suit itself. Medication. You're going to need some radiation poisoning medication, and this is preventative medication for the most part. The IOSAT tablet is their treatment to prevent the absorption of radioactive material. The active chemical in these IOSAT pills is potassium iodide. These are used by governments and agencies worldwide to assist in the prevention of thyroid cancer in folks who are exposed to radioactive iodides. These radioactive iodides are caused by nuclear reactor accidents and nuclear bombs. Potassium iodide pills, these are not a treatment. They're a preventative measure and will provide protection against radioactive iodine by preventing its absorption by the thyroid gland. The pills have been used where radiation poisoning has been an issue for areas surrounding an event. Point in case, these were administered to nearby locals at Chernobyl in 1986, at Fukushima in 2011, Germany in 2017, and 2018 to the residents in Belgium over a nuclear power plant failure concerns. A dosimeter. The problem with radiation is that you don't see it and you don't feel it until it's too late. So having a device that will tell you how much radiation you're exposed to is a very handy and important device. There are two types. You have your dosimeter and then you have a radiation detector. This item is a dosimeter. Now, an affordable option to a radiation detector is the dosimeter. These can be relatively cheap, but a lot of these devices are one-time use. Now, there are a lot of reusable ones on the market, but this is a device that fits you know, easy in your pocket or something like that. This can give you a good indication as to how much radiation your body has absorbed or has been exposed to. A radiation detector. Now a radiation detector usually has a built-in dosimeter on it also, at least on the newer models, the electronic types, and there are many of these on the market. The major differences in these are the levels of radiation in which they'll pick up, their processing times, some of these devices will process the radiation in your immediate area in as little as 10 seconds. Some take minutes to hours to process this information. And you don't want to sit in an area for 30 minutes waiting on your device to process whether or not it's uh, radioactive. So this is one of those items that it really pays to probably spend a little more on. And one of the important things to take into account too is m the majority of these radiation detectors on the market do not detect alpha particles. And alpha particles are the shortest distance particles, but they are very high in energy. Most radiation detectors do not detect them because they can be shielded against very easily. We can shield against alpha particles by a piece of paper or the outer layer of our skin will prevent the alpha particles from reaching the inner areas of our body and doing damage. The problem with alpha particles is that if we can't detect them, then they may be present in the food that we're eating or the water that we're drinking. And this can be an extreme problem because if you take alpha radiation internal to your body, then it's gonna do extreme damage. So I would recommend purchasing a radiation detector that does detect alpha particles also. And you can tell by looking at these, but these type of devices are absolutely necessary to tell you if an area or an object is radioactive or not. There's basically no other way to tell except for some type of detection device. And after a nuclear attack, if we don't know what areas are radiated and what are not, and what objects are safe and what are not, then we're probably not going to last too long into the event. Radiation wipes. Now there are also radiation towelettes that you can use to wipe away any contaminated areas after a chemical attack or a radiation leak or nuclear attack. Thorough cleansing with warm water and soap is the best and a shower helps tremendously. But remember when taking a shower to wash and scrub your hair thoroughly, but don't use conditioner because conditioner will cause the radioactive particles to actually bond to your hair. Next, a radiation water purifier. 
Now this is the device that would be very handy to have. Taking radiological contaminants out of water is an extremely difficult process. Most water filters, purifiers on the market will not do this. Boiling it will not do it. It takes a special process of reverse osmosis or through use of chemicals. Now there are some of these on the market, but you'll notice that these all have a relatively low lifespan. They're only good for 10 to 20, maybe 25 gallons of drinking water. But these devices are not that expensive and they do work. The thing that they do not remove is any compressed gases that are in the water. And that's why when you read the advertising, they'll say they remove up to 99.99% of radiological and other contaminants, or they remove the majority of it, but any gaseous or radioactive gases that are dissolved into the liquid will not be filtered out through this process. So keep that in mind. But these are compact, lightweight, easy to use, and you can also always purify the water through one of these and then test it with your radiation detector that can detect the alpha particles and you should be safe at that point. Next, repair tape, duct tape, similar substance. There may come a time when we have to make a repair to our NBC suit or uh, gloves or maybe boots. Now we know that if we damage this equipment that in the modern world like now we would just throw it away and buy another set but in an apocalyptic scenario we use what we got and if we do get a tear in one of these types of suits then we want to try to repair this as best we can especially if we're out in the field if i'm in a radioactive area in my suit and i experience a tear i want to repair that or fix that as quick as i can so having something with me such as duct tape, maybe a roll of flex seal or tenacious tape will come in very handy in a time like this. This may not completely eliminate the amount of radioactive particles that would attempt to get into the rip or the tear on my suit, but it would potentially decrease the levels that could enter my suit. Any type of solid particle is definitely going to keep out and that's where most of the radiation is going to be emanating from is solid particles. So this would at least help me seal up my suit. I'm not saying it's going to work permanently but it might help enough to get me back home. It's a good idea to have. And next a type of communication. Now I know this doesn't seem like it goes into this kit, but the last thing we want to do is be in our suit and be in this type of situation and all we have is the, this type of gear with us for whatever reason. Having a means of communication in this kit will also help out greatly because we want to know what other people are saying. We want to be able to tell if it's going to be safe to enter an area. So having a means of communication is definitely not really considered a nuclear survival kit, but I think it would be a good idea to put in this type of kit some type of firearm, some type of weapon with a long reach. We don't want to fight in a suit like this, but in this type of environment, you never know. And it's better to be safe than sorry. And besides, if we're prepping all this other stuff, then we at least want a weapon to be able to defend ourselves with. Because when people see us in a $300 gas mask with filters in our backpack, they're going to want it. And having a weapon is a way to prevent them from getting it, or at least to attempt to. Well, I hope the list was informative. There are obviously a lot of other things on the market that we could add in. And in the comments below, if you know of any devices of any other type of radiation prevention measures, uh, you know, mention them in the comments and let's check them out. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to check out the rest of the Nuclear War series. Uh, focus in a lot of videos coming up soon on the Nuclear War series and the Nuclear Apocalypse. Looking at the types of radiation, the types of fallout, the, how the blast occurs, the uh, actual physics of it, the different blast types, um, radiation terminology. They've got a video coming out with just all of the radiation terminology and the definitions for it. A video on radioactive elements, a survival video for the stages of the apocalypse talking about things we can do to prepare to survive types of shelters a lot of good stuff coming out on nuclear war so check that out on the channel uh, thanks a lot for watching and for now Sear survivor out